Most people would say death begins when the heart stops beating. This seems obvious. But have you noticed that the seemingly obvious point seems to become less obvious when laws and medical decisions are being made? So today, let's talk, what is death? Death can be defined by three different types of definitions, legal, clinical, and cultural. And they all have their valid points. And these definitions have changed over the course of history as we've learned more about the human body. So let's start with the obvious. Legal. The National Health and Medical Research Council states that in Australian law, death is generally defined as either irreversible cessation of circulation of blood in the body of a person or irreversible cessation of all function of the brain of a person. This definition legally applies in all states and territories in Australia, except oddly Western Australia, which has no statutory definition of death. Then I can't explain that one. Clinical. The medical profession in Australia accepts the legal definition as that is how most deaths will be defined. However, there is the complicated question of brain death, meaning the irreversible cessation of all functions of the brain. To establish if the brain is dead, multiple doctors must certify that there is no evidence of brain function over a period of time, the loss of function is not a result of drugs, low temperature, low blood sugar, or low blood sodium, the person has sustained a significant enough brain injury to account for the irreversible loss of brain function. There are no reflex functions associated with coughing, gagging, eye movement, blinking, or the dilation of the pupils. The person makes no attempts to breathe when disconnected from the respirator for several minutes. During this test, the carbon dioxide levels of in the blood have risen above the point at which breathing is normally stimulated. Next of kin often have an issue accepting brain death because of the common plot line in TVs and movies of patients in comas that wake up for after 10 years and all is well. Coma and brain death are two very different things. Cultural. Different religions and cultures define death or the start of death in different ways. For instance, the Roman Catholic Church defines death as the complete and final separation of the soul from the body. For followers of other religions, defining death becomes difficult when medical intervention is involved. For those who follow Zen Buddhism or Shintoism, they believe that the mind and body are integrated and thus have trouble accepting the brain death criteria to determine death. Some Orthodox Jews, Muslims and fundamental Christians believe that as long as the heart is beating, even if it's only artificially, then you are still alive. Historically. Until the stethoscope was invented in 1819, people had to get rather creative and sometimes extreme with their methods of determining death. Remember, at one point, safety coffins, coffins that were equipped with bells to alert those above that you weren't indeed dead yet, were a thing. And some people requested in their wills that their heads be severed or their heart be pierced prior to burial to make sure that they were actually dead. In ancient Greek and Roman times, the signs of death were the absence of a heartbeat and breathing and the onset of putrefaction, which made things pretty damn obvious. In medieval times, a candle was held up to the mouth. If a flicker of the candle was shown, then there were signs of life. Many cultures throughout history have relied on signs of decomposition to be 100% positive that someone was dead, and thus leave an interval between the apparent death and the disposal of the body. In 19th century Germany, for example, corpse houses provided a place where the corpses were kept under surveillance until putrefaction was evident. And you gotta wonder how much those surveillance people were getting paid. With medical intervention ever increasing, death is becoming harder to define. And so I'll tell you again, it's time to go write your advanced care directives so others can be very clear what your definition of death looks like. And with that, that's all from Gary and I here at Taboo Education. Now go talk death.